and you tell us like uh what what mad max aka c money meant to y'all hood The tale of Mad Max closely mirrors the experiences of many street gangsters, powerful, popular, and surrounded by a loyal crew, yet lacking the wisdom to know when to stop. Max wasn't your typical gangster. He was like a demon in human form. He lived for his gang, cherished by his friends, and dreaded by his rivals. In fact, meeting Max on the streets or in a dark alley was the last thing anyone wanted. However, Max's street reputation took a dark turn due to one final act. This is the extraordinary story story of Mad Max, G. Erbo's assassin that killed countless rappers. Mad Max, who also went by aliases Sea Money and Killer Chris, was raised on the east side of Chicago. His upbringing was primarily overseen by his mother due to the tragic murder of his father when Max was just 12 years old. Consequently, he swiftly adapted to his environment. Max hailed from No Limit, a faction of renegade black P-Stones that merged with the Muskegon Boys, another renegade group associated with the GDs, to form NLMB. Within NLMB, Max had numerous relatives, including brothers, uncles, and cousins, all who held respected positions. Some claim that he was linked to two prominent No Limit members named Mali and g Main Ski, but exact nature of their relationship remains unverified, whether they were blood-related or simply grew up together. Hit a nigga with the 45th, better make his ass do 40 flips. Regardless, they all came of age together, alongside notable rappers G. Erbo and Lil Bibby, who were among the gang's most renowned members. NLMB is one of the biggest and most dangerous gangs on the east side of Chicago. NLMB, comprising renegade subsets, established a reputation for conflicts with nearly every east side faction. However, in contrast to some other groups in Chicago, NLMB displayed a more organized structure. The presence of experienced individuals, known as OGs, guiding the younger generation contributed to the gang's resilience, despite its multitude of adversaries. The primary rival factions that engaged in conflicts pertinent to this narrative within No Limits sphere were Lakeside, KTS, and Black Mob. Black Mob predominantly consisted of Black P-Stones, while Lakeside consisted mainly of GDs, yet both maintained complicated relationships of alliance and enmity with NLMB. KTS, on the other hand, represented a coalition of various sets, including members from Lakeside and Black Mob, featuring well-known rap artists like KTS, Dre, and Vaughn. Mad Max emerged as one of NLMB's most active participants and, concurrently, one of KTS's most vehement adversaries. He received his introduction into street life from his uncles and other seasoned individuals within his neighborhood, imparting knowledge on navigating the urban environment. However, like many young individuals respected in Chicago who lacked alternative means of livelihood such as rap, Max eventually succumbed to recklessness, which ultimately led to his demise. During Max's formative years, No Limit found itself embroiled in a fierce feud with Black Mob. Initially, the two gangs enjoyed an amicable rapport, but territorial disputes escalated into a protracted and hostile rivalry. In 2009, a No Limit member named Vito engaged in illegal activities within Black Mob's territory without the requisite permission or tax tax payments. Subsequently, a Black Mob affiliate confronted Vito for his failure to demonstrate due respect, which prompted No Limit's leadership to instruct Vito to retaliate against the offending party. Regrettably, Vito responded by opening fire on the individual in front of his family, a flagrant violation of their established code. This incident triggered a prolonged dispute between No Limit and Black Mob, culminating in Vito's own shooting. Vito's tragic demise set off a chain reaction of retaliatory shootings, escalating tensions between the two rival groups. At a certain point during this intensifying conflict, an individual named Dio, associated with both Black Mob and Lakeside, met a tragic end while walking alongside South Manistee Avenue on the 8100 block. The circumstances surrounding Dio's murder remain unclear, although rumors have persisted suggesting Mad Max's involvement. This event marked an initial occurrence in a sequence of alleged murders attributed to Max. In the year 2010, Max found himself incarcerated on charges related to an alleged shooting. However, due to his minor status at the time, limited information is available about this incident. Shortly thereafter, he re-emerged onto the streets, fueled by a quest for retribution. During the subsequent years, Max experienced the loss of several of his senior associates within No Limit, including his own blood uncle. In November 2011, the gang suffered a significant blow with the passing of White Folks, one of its leaders. White Folks had succumbed to gunshot wounds inflicted by Lakeside members in 2006. 
His demise resonated deeply within NLMB, particularly with Mad Max, as many gang members regarded white folks with great reverence. Subsequently, a few months later, a harrowing assassination attempt unfolded, targeting a gathering of No Limit members, resulting in two fatalities and multiple injuries. The tragic incident occurred as the group congregated on a street corner outside a liquor store situated on the 2500 block of East 79th Street. An assailant driving by initiated a fuselage of gunshots using a Tech 9 firearm. Five members of the group sustained gunshot wounds, tragically leading to the loss of NLMB Rock and Alamo, while three others endured severe injuries but survived. Notably, Rock, affectionately embraced by the gang as Rock Block, had transitioned away from street life and had merely come down to engage with some younger associates. In contrast, Alamo, aged 57 with four children, represented an older member within the gang. The identity of the perpetrators behind Rock and Alamo's killings remains unclear, though rumors have pointed toward the involvement of KTS members. Rock's close friendship with Mad Max had a profound impact on the latter, and his demise struck Max deeply. Consequently, Max made a solemn vow to exact vengeance upon KTS in the wake of Rock's tragic death. A few months later, in October 2012, tragedy struck when 33-year-old Carlos Alexander, also known as No Limit Big Los, met his demise in the 7900 block of South Escanaba Avenue. Around 10.30 in the morning, while outside his residence, two individuals abruptly approached and opened fire on Big Los, swiftly fleeing on foot. Big Los held a dual role in Max's life, serving as both a respected senior figure within No Limit and his blood uncle. Consequently, Big Los' tragic death had a profound impact on Max, transforming him into a relentless pursuer of revenge. Big Los was just one of Max's OGs, but also his blood uncle. So his death really turned him into a savage and he was out for revenge. Approximately a month later, on November 10th, 2012, Anthony Bagsby, commonly known as Bud from Lakeside, met a grim fate while walking along the 2600 block of East 79th Street. He encountered three or four assailants who subjected him to multiple gunshot wounds. Bud was promptly rushed to Northwestern Memorial Hospital, but was tragically pronounced deceased. A memorial service was held in his honor on a street corner near the site of his murder. Friends and loved ones acknowledged Bud's association with the street gang, but they also remembered him as an affable individual who had fallen in with the wrong crowd. No arrests were made in connection with Bud's murder, although rumors persisted linking members of NLMB, including Mad Max, who had been actively seeking rivals following the losses of Rock and Alamo to the crime. Furthermore, speculations hinted at Bud's presence during the murder of Big Los, Max's uncle. However, Max did not halt his quest for retaliation. On April 4, 2013, a lakeside member of the name D'Angelo Simmons, also known as Lolo, found himself in a tragic situation. He was strolling down the street in proximity to his residence, accompanied by another individual, when two assailants approached them and unleashed a barrage of gunfire. Lolo sustained a gunshot wound to the chest and was urgently transported to Northwestern Memorial Hospital. Sadly, he succumbed to his injuries later that same day. According to accounts from friends and family, Lolo had been out shopping for a family outing and was on his way home when the shooting occurred. A family acquaintance described him as a good-hearted individual who happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Law enforcement authorities never officially identified the second individual accompanying Lolo at the time of the shooting. Nevertheless, speculation suggested that it might have been another Lakeside member known as Mac Main. Mac Main was allegedly part of the group in the vehicle that had opened fire on NLMB members on the day that Rock and Alamo were killed. Regrettably, no arrests were made in connection with Lolo's murder. Unverified rumors circulated, implying that Mad Max had been the one to fire the fatal shot at Lolo, while Mac Main fled the scene. Additionally, there were speculations that G. Erbo had been present during the incident and had pursued Mac Main, ultimately shooting him in the leg. However, these claims remain unconfirmed, as Mac Main did not seek medical treatment and was not identified by law enforcement as the individual accompanying Lolo when he was killed. Both Bud and Lolo held respected positions within Lakeside. Members of No Limit frequently exploited their deaths to taunt their adversaries, incorporating references to smoking on Bud and Lolo in songs and on social media platforms. This provocative behavior only served to intensify the ongoing conflict between Lakeside and NLMB. During the summer of 2013, the conflict between No Limit and Black Mob escalated significantly. Around that period, No Limit experienced the loss of its two members, Simo and Tracy. They wasted little time seeking retribution. In June 2013, a tragic incident occurred when 24-year-old Jordan Jefferson, a Black Mob member, suffered a fatal gunshot wound to the head in the 2400 block of East 75th Street. The Cook County Medical Examiner pronounced him dead at the scene. Reverend Isaac Whitney, a local church pastor, recounted that Jordan had assisted him earlier in the day by carrying supplies into his office, and he even attended a church service. However, Jordan expressed uncertainty about joining the church and later walked with the pastor's son to a corner store. Suddenly, three gunshots rang out, 
and the pastor, upon looking up, discovered Jordan lying lifeless on the ground. It was alleged that Mad Max, alongside a group of other individuals from NLMB, encountered Jordan and approached him, firing three shots that resulted in his tragic demise. Max's actions appeared to accumulate a growing list of casualties, marking his alleged third murder in less than a year. August 10, 2013 proved to be a significant loss for NLMB, and they mourned the passing of a respected member named Kobe, whose real name was Jacoby Heron. Kobe was fatally shot outside of McDonald's in 2400 block of South Oglesby Avenue. Kobe shared a close bond with G. Erbo, who had spoken about him in interviews and even named a mixtape after him titled Ballin' Like I'm Kobe. Moments before his death, Kobe had been with Herb and other NLMB members, engaged in a dice game on the block. However, he suddenly decided to head home, declining offers for a ride. Shortly after his departure, gunshots rang out, prompting the group to rush down the block, only to find Kobe lifeless on the street. He's out here, I'm right here. On point with the leak. Bowling right there, shooting dice. Nah, they like right here. Bro walked off. Went to the crib, for. We steady here and shots and see We ain't know this, bro. Getting shot out of none of this shit, for. It's four in the morning. You hear me, for? It's four in the morning. I'm steady here and them bitches. We like, damn, somebody get blue down. We steady here and them bitch. Then I just jump up like fuck. That's Kobe, boy. No one was apprehended in connection with his murder, but rumors circulated implicating KTS Vaughn and another individual named Posto. Kobe's demise represented a significant loss for NLMB, intensifying the existing tensions. In the pursuit of revenge for Kobe's death, NLMB continued to search for Vaughn and Posto. However, before they could reach their targets, Max allegedly took the life of another black mob member for the second time that year. On the morning of August 13, 2013, around 10 in the morning, a 34-year-old named Eric Chisholm was fatally shot by an assailant in a passing SUV on the 7400 block of South Colfax Avenue. Eric was standing with at least one other person when a light-colored SUV drove by and unleashed a hail of gunfire. He was rushed to Northwestern Memorial Hospital, where he was subsequently pronounced dead. Although the police identified Eric as a known gang member from Black Mob, a neighborhood witness who knew him contended that he was not an active member and had recently become a father. Thus, it remained unclear whether Eric was affiliated with the gang or merely an innocent bystander. No arrests were made in connection with Eric's murder, but rumors swirled suggesting the possible involvement of Mad Max. NLMB remained resolute in their pursuit of retribution for Kobe's death, and by the end of the year, they achieved their objective by reportedly eliminating one of his alleged killers, Posto. On November 23, 2013, a tragic event unfolded when Tyshawn Posto Anderson fell victim to a fatal shooting. The incident occurred in the 2700 block of East 80th Street, merely steps away from his own residence. Posto had been standing in a hallway when an unidentified assailant opened fire. He was quickly transported to the hospital in a critical condition, but regrettably was pronounced dead at 11.50 p.m. Law enforcement authorities asserted that Posto had documented affiliation with the gang. However, family members painted a different picture, describing him as a typical teenager who enjoyed playing video games and tinkering with electronic devices. Posto faced academic challenges and had been exploring alternative education programs. Nevertheless, they acknowledged his past involvement with gangs at school and his release from jail just five days prior to his untimely death. No arrests were made in connection with Posto's murder, but rumors circulated implicating Crazy James and Mad Max from NLMB as the potential culprits. It was believed that this act of violence was driven by a desire for vengeance following the death of Kobe. Posto held a prominent place within KTS and was well loved by its members. Subsequently, members of No Limit resorted to dissing Posto in their music and on social media platforms as a means to provoke their rivals, further exacerbating the already intense animosity between the two factions. Over the subsequent year, Mad Max faced multiple arrests, which significantly curtailed his involvement in street activities. On July 21st, he was apprehended for reckless conduct. Then on October 17th, he faced charges for not wearing a seatbelt and driving without a valid license. Although he was swiftly released for the latter offense, he found himself arrested again, this time for disorderly conduct just a week later. Consequently, Max found himself entangled in legal issues for a significant part of that year, leading to a decrease in his street activities. On June 23, 2015, KTS Vaughn, one of the NLMB's primary adversaries, 
met a tragic fate when he was shot and killed. The exact perpetrator remained unknown, but the various theories circulated regarding his demise. Vaughn had been walking alone in the 7500 block of South Ellis Avenue when occupants of an SUV spotted him, alighting him from the vehicle to shoot him repeatedly in the body and head. According to unverified reports, Vaughn was under the influence of Xanax at the time of his death and was not fully aware of his surroundings. Law enforcement arrived at the scene, pronouncing a 21-year-old dead. Vaughn had been one of KTS's most active members and had garnered enemies across several rival gangs. The identity of Vaughn's assailant that night remained shrouded in mystery, with one theory suggesting the involvement of NLMB members, including Mad Max. KTS Vaughn had referred to himself as Big Cutthroat to Smoker, and shortly after his demise, Mad Max adopted the moniker to Smoker on his Instagram account. This led many to speculate that he was taking credit for the hit, although it might have been a means of taunting his rivals. In 2016, Mad Max encountered further legal complications and faced multiple arrests, primarily related to weapons possession. However, a transformation occurred in the subsequent year, and by 2017, Max resumed his previous activities. You know, like, we've been in tour with them guys for a minute, you know, Lil Herb or whatever, them, like all them Lil 150 guys. You for me, they specifically Lil On July 10th, 2017, Black Mob suffered the loss of one of its most prominent shooters and renowned rappers, Shooter Shells. Approximately three months prior to the tragic event, Shooter Shells had released a fierce diss track titled Death of 150, which he targeted several deceased members of No Limit, including individuals like Rock, Kobe, and Fazio, names that G. Erbo had referenced in his own music. Furthermore, Shooter Shells had a reputation as a prolific shooter and claimed multiple casualties at the time of his death. Following the release of that mixtape, he became a primary focus of No Limit's retaliation efforts. Shooter Shells was ambushed while walking to his car in the Auburn Gresham neighborhood by three assailants who shot him repeatedly in the head and body. According to police reports, he sustained approximately 15 to 18 gunshot wounds, rendering him unrecognizable. The investigators recovered as many as 43 shell casings at the scene. Two months prior to his demise, the FBI initiated an inquiry into the ongoing conflict between Black Mob and No Limit. Subsequent investigation into the shooter shell's murder suggested a likely connection to the ongoing feud and his provocative diss track. Although no one was apprehended, persistent rumors pointed to the potential involvement of Mad Max. Years Years following the incident, a police report identified Max as one of the primary suspects in the murder. However, before law enforcement could apprehend him, events in the streets took precedence. On August 3, 2018, Mad Max found himself in a situation while in the process of moving into a building located on the 7600 block of South Kingston Avenue. While outside the building, he purportedly spotted an adversary from Lakeside and promptly made a dash toward the building, seeking refuge. However, he was unable to escape the pursuit and was ultimately chased down. During the confrontation, he sustained sustained two gunshot wounds, one in the stomach and another in the arm. Max was discovered slumped over in the courtyard and was swiftly transported to the hospital in critical condition. Initially, there was hope that Max would recover from his injuries. Medical professionals managed to keep him alive for an entire month following the shooting. However, his battle with injuries came to a tragic end on September 3, 2018, when he succumbed to his wounds. A few days after the murder, police apprehended a lakeside member named Terrell Webb, also known as Hell Rell. Nearly two months, but Chicago police have filed their first first murder charge stemming from the deadliest week in Chicago has seen this year. 27-year-old Terrell Webb is accused of shooting and killing a rival gang member. He was charged after a deathbed statement from the victim. It was one of more than a dozen murders the first weekend in August. A witness came forward and identified him as the assailant, leading to his arrest. Law enforcement officers also discovered a weapon in his possession. Nonetheless, rumors circulated regarding Max allegedly providing information on his deathbed. While he was in the hospital, slowly succumbing to his injuries, police reportedly visited his room and conducted an interrogation about the shooting. It was purported that Max was persuaded to provide a videotaped statement identifying Hal Rell as the shooter. And, uh, do you understand who I am and what I do? And did I then ask you if you would agree to speak to me regarding the aggravated battery when you were shot? Did you uh, agree to have a conversation with me? And in summary, when we spoke earlier, did you tell me that you were moving into your mother's house? That, and did you also say that as you were moving into your mother's house, you saw a subject or a person that you need to be Terrell? that Terrell kicked open the gate in, uh, at your mother's apartment building and then proceeded to shoot you with a fire. 
I'm sorry, is that a yes? Notably, this videotape was never presented in court, and Hell Rel was subsequently released due to lack of evidence. Nevertheless, the rumor that Max had cooperated with the authorities tarnished his reputation. Many of his adversaries contended that despite his street reputation, he had ultimately compromised it by allegedly cooperating with law enforcement. However, it's important to note that the veracity of these claims has never been substantiated. Despite the controversy surrounding him, members of No Limit continue to honor Mad Max and grant him the respect he earned as one of their most active participants. Like many individuals who command respect in the streets, Max appeared to struggle with knowing when to step away from the dangerous lifestyle. Had he not met his tragic end, it is conceivable that he would have persisted until encountering legal consequences. Ultimately, he made himself a conspicuous target, and it was merely a matter of time before the consequences of his actions caught up with him.